Greetings YouTube, this is your resident Land Cruiser nut and today we're going to be doing a fun video. So as you can see here I have this beautiful 1991 FJ80 Land Cruiser and uh, I have to say this is one of the best um, best ones I've ever seen as far as the condition. Uh, but what we're here today is this thing needs an alternator and I thought this was a good time to make a video of a procedure that many people ask about but I couldn't really find a video of it on YouTube so I thought you know I'd do it so this customer has the again 3FE that came with the 80 amp alternator that originally had the fan was external on the alternator some people do put an 80 amp alternator that you can that you can buy from some of the big box stores that have an internal fan well the big thing many people want to do is upgrade the alternator to a 90 amp but there is a slight difference in the 90 amp alternator that Toyota makes and you have to do a little bit of a modification. So as you can see here, I decided I want to make this video. Taking off the belts is pretty easy. You got your, you got a tensioner right down here and then you got the power steering pump that's a tensioner over there. So what we're left with is the space where we're going to do some of the modification. Now let me come over back to the back real quick and show you the alternators. This was the alternator that came off of it. And as you can see, it has an internal fan. Uh, obviously, someone replaced this alternator at some point. And you can see this thing looks fairly new, but it had a major malfunction and caught on fire. That went bad, so we need to do some things with the wiring. But the big thing is I wanted to show you is the new Toyota, not new, it's a remanufactured Toyota 80 amp alternator. First thing I'll tell you about these is um, they're sold at a couple places. I think Cruiser Tech sells them or Cruiser Outfitters, one of the two. Check your Toyota dealership first. I got this for about $80 less at my local dealership than some of the other places that are advertising them. So that's my one tip on getting a hold of these. Now, if you take a look here, I guess we could call them dog ears. You notice these are a little bit different than these. So let me set them up next to each other like that. As you can see, there's a little bit of a difference. So why we're going to have to make a modification to this, these dog ears on this 90 amp alternator because of the difference in how those sit. Now I was thinking about doing this and I just didn't want to go cut cutting on this, these dog ears aimlessly. I guess I think through some practices uh, and think about what's the easiest way so I can show you and plus I can get the most accurate cut without having to guess. So let's go back over to the front. Well, if you guys ever seen my video on doing the charcoal canister on one of these 3FEs, I told you the best way to do it, instead of trying to do the charcoal canister while it's uh, and replace it while the bracket is inside of the truck. Just take the bracket off It makes it a whole lot easier to see where you need to mount this charcoal canister and do what you need to do Same thing can probably be said with this Situation we have here. I decided I'm going to take off that bracket operates as the motor mount as well So that I can actually see better when I get this over to the bench and start cutting and can make the exact marks where I need to make them without trying to get down in here and see, or well, not being able to see actually, and make the most accurate cut that I can. So as you can see, we got a few bolts down here that we're gonna take off. I'm gonna take off the majority of those and then put a jack under the engine um, to support the engine on this side when I take that, that, that bracket off. But I just want everybody to see this so far, know what we're doing, where we're at, and why we're doing it. This will make more sense when I get everything on the bench and I can show you how this sits on there and how the original one was supposed to sit on there. And then we do the modification, you'll have a good idea of what you need to do if you decide to go with this upgrade as well. Now, I guess one of the questions is why would you go with this upgrade in the first place? Well, if you're considering putting a winch, lights, and other things, the more ampage your alternator puts out, the better. So this customer, it feels like he's going to be going in that direction soon. So this made the obvious, made the choice obvious to make this modification. Uh, I'm going to get this mount off, and then later on we're going to go over to the bench, and I'm going to show you how to get this uh, all set up and get the right cuts done, so that you know 
we only got to do this once because what you don't want to do is mess up this alternator because once you cut it you can't take it back um, and we get it done correctly let me get this off and then we'll go from there all right everyone we are back in the shop and uh, there was a quite a little bit change of plans it's been a couple days since I shot that first segment uh, what I decided to do was get on eBay and try to find a mount that was already out and I actually found this one and had it shipped to the house and just kind of make it easier to see what is going on. So we got the Toyota 90 amp alternator here. I know it's hard to see, but we've already made some marks along of what we're going to try to cut off and then grind this down. And I'll show you why we're going to grind that down here in just a sec. So if you were just trying to do it like this, you're going to notice that there's underneath that front ear, there's a little bit of a space instead of filling that area up with like washers or anything else, because what you got to worry about is also the alignment of your belt. We're just going to go ahead and grind this area down to it's a little bit thinner to take up that difference in space. So this will slide farther back. There's the other school of thought is to modify the bracket itself. Now I have thought about that, but um, this isn't my truck. This is a customer's truck and kind of just thinking over if you ever want to go back to the other style alternator, then you may have messed this up. So it's easier to modify the actual alternator itself than to take this bracket off. And, and taking this bracket off is a little bit of a pain in the ass. As you can see, there's the one I ordered from eBay. There's a piece of the block that's still here. These two bolts are actually pretty easy to get off. They're on very tight. It's this one right here. And I felt like I was going to snap the, the bolt in my customer's truck. So I stopped and that's why I got on eBay and ordered this one. But we kind of explained some things and this is gonna be a little bit of trial and error with this. So we're gonna grind, do a test fit, grind, do a test fit until it comes out right. Oh, so let me go set up to do a little grinding and then um, we'll start the process. Okay, we have the alternator on the bench. And while we're making this cut, I'll explain that you definitely want to cover this as much as you can and all of the holes on the alternator casing. You don't want any of these metal shavings actually flying into the casing because it could damage it. And then you'd be having to take this thing right back off and do this all over again. The other thing that you would see when we were making that cut is we put three vertical lines and we did this with the thought process of let's just make a little cut first, you know, because you can't add back, right? So this is a little bit of trial and error as we then we made these cuts. So ultimately you, what you'll see at the end of the video is I'll show you some reference marks of exactly where we made the cuts. So maybe you won't have to do this trial and error as much and it'll be a little bit simpler for you. If you remember earlier in the video, I showed that horizontal line that we made and that's the cut that we're making now. And you're just trying to notch that area out. Uh, the goal is not only for the alternator to fit, but you also have to make it so that it rotates because the alternator itself provides tension to the belt. So you see, we made our first cut. We were trying to cut a little bit more with the cutoff wheel, but we were starting to get into the housing. So we decided to switch over to a sanding disc. After the cutting wheel and the grinding, you see that we did our first test fit and we got the alternator to now fit inside of the mount. So now we need to focus on taking up that gap that's behind that first dog ear. Here we are just taking a little bit of measurements and decided how far down we want to grind that dog ear where we made that notch. Again, using the concept of you can always remove, but you can't add back. So we're going to continue doing a little bit of grinding on this till we get some of that material off and make it just a little bit thinner. So we take up that, that spacing and that gap so that the belt will line up. As we continue to grind um, and take material off, we would stop periodically and make some checks with the bracket just to make sure we're not taking off too much and we're kind of just getting it just right. One of the things I do want to mention with this bracket is having it off, it makes this so much easier. I just don't see a way to be able to make this modification 
on your truck because you can't see uh, what you're doing. So one of the things I want to offer up to everyone is this bracket. I can put it in the mail for everyone. If you ever need it, you can just email me and I'll put my email in the description below. And then I, you pay for the shipping and I will mail this to you and you can make the modification. And when you're done with it, you can mail it back or you can mail it to the next person that needs it. Ultimately, I would want it back when everyone is done and I would just kind of keep mailing it and we would continue this chain. So if that is of interest to you, just let me know and put a comment below. I will reach out to you and get this thing in the mail to you so you can do this modification yourself without having to pull the, the bracket out of your truck because it is a pain in the ass. So I wanted to come back to this original alternator for a moment so you can see what it looks like and pay close attention to those round dimples before I show you the finished product. We are now looking at the finished product and as you can see where one of those dimples was I'm putting my finger at now and you can see where I made the cut that the other one is missing um, and some of the grinding that we did. So I hope this gives you an indication of where you need to make your first cuts so there's not so much trial and error and gives you, like I said, those reference points. So we're doing our final test fit on the alternator itself, get everything nice and tightened up. And as I rotate it over, you're gonna see exactly what I've been talking about all this time. And it should give you an indication of what the final outcome is gonna be so that you know exactly what to do. So if you look, that front dog ear now sits perfectly flush against the bracket and this alternator will rotate fully to allow you to put the belt on so everything will line perfectly up when you're going to install this on your vehicle. The next part I'm going to show you is I'm going to go ahead and put this on the truck. I'm obviously not going to show you how to install the alternator. That's pretty straightforward. But I am going to drive around for a couple days to make sure that there's no issues and I'll give you an update on if I had any problems or, or anything like that. As promised, uh, I've driven the truck around about 30 or 40 miles um, since the alternator exchange and you can see it tucked in nicely down there. Everything fits perfect. It's uh, all been working perfect. The belt lines up. There have been no issues with this modification. I would say that if you're interested uh, with the bracket that I have, just like I said in the previous segment, just reach out to me and uh, I can get it in the mail to you and you can pay for the shipping and when you're done, you can just send it back or uh, we'll forward it on to the next person so that they can make the modification. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and is able to learn from it. And as usual, thank you to all of my subscribers. Thanks for watching.